this video, we're going to review smart wall management via Hike Central Control Client. Management of your smart wall is rather easy, but it's something that you typically don't do every day, so you might forget some of the steps that are involved in smart wall management. Let's start by selecting smart wall management under the tool section. It's important to note that adding a smart wall to your system is not done via the control client, but instead via the web client or the administrator's tool. Certainly you need to do that first before you can come here and manage the smart wall views. As you can see, this screen is broken down into a few different areas. On the left hand side in our navigation tree, we have a camera section and we have a views section. Here we have a representation of what our video wall looks like. In this case, the physical video wall that I'm using is located in our City of Industry showroom. This is a 3 by 2 video wall in that there's one, two, three columns by one, two rows of monitors. So it's a total of six physical monitors. As you can see, this particular monitor is a full screen or full monitor image. But if I were to look at, say, this monitor here, it's broken down into a two by two. We'll see how to manipulate that in just a few minutes. And down below, I have the ability to view any camera that's actually assigned to a particular location within my video wall. Each of these sections has different control icons for configuration and management as well. Let's start off at the top of the screen where we have a synchronization icon. If we make changes, we may want to synchronize with the system. Next to that, we have our configuration icon. And here we can choose whether or not we want to display the window IDs as you see these different numbers here, and whether we want to auto switch stream types. And that's followed by minimize, maximize, and finally an X to close the smart wall management window. In the upper right hand corner of our smart wall representation, we have several icons including lock, splits, roaming windows, stop all, and save view. Down below this section, we have the ability to view multiple smart walls at the same time. So if you have more than one and you want to see your total configuration, you can choose to do so. This would be for one smart wall, two smart walls, and three smart walls. So if I click on three, you see it makes my representation much smaller so it can fit the other ones in. And then down at the bottom of the screen, as I select a particular tile or monitor within my smart wall, I'm choosing to view that video live in this location down here. Then I have all of the different controls that I might need. I can look at presets, patrols, etc. I can control PTZ functionality, but also I want you to notice if you mouse over the video, you will see the current view state, which is right now in live view. I can also choose to see the camera status, which opens a window up on the right hand side. I can switch to a substream. I can open PTZ controls and I can switch from live view to playback view. Now, when we talk about managing our smart wall, what we're really doing is dividing it up into different sections to display the different cameras that we want. However, the smart wall can actually be designed with more than one set of views. So for instance, I might set my smart wall to display only visible cameras and then I would save that as a view. I might then choose to set up a second view that shows only my thermal cameras, and I'd save that view. And I might choose another view that puts cameras into a much more logical order so that I could follow someone as they walked through a particular facility. That would be another view. Whatever your application is, you're gonna to need to determine how your smart wall is actually set up. So the first thing we need to do is to see how to put a camera into the smart wall or into a section on the smart wall. As you can see, all of the sections are fully populated right now. But if I go here to ID number 13 and I click on the X in the upper right hand corner, well, it removes that camera from the wall. But you can see over on the left hand side, because that was the tile that I currently had selected, it highlighted that camera for me in my camera tree. So if I really wanted to just put that camera right back in there, I can drag it and drop it in there to do so, or I could select any other camera from my camera tree to do that. 
In order to prevent someone from accidentally removing a camera like I just showed you a moment ago, you do have the ability to lock each of the monitors. So if you remember, there's the lock icon here in the upper right hand corner. Now I currently have this section highlighted, but notice when I click the lock icon, the verification lock icon shows up in this tile right here. That's because remember, this is a physical monitor that's divided up into four different cameras. You can't lock just one portion of the monitor. The entire monitor gets locked. So these four cameras now cannot be removed. Notice the X is no longer even there. A different user with proper permissions would be able to unlock that particular monitor, but without that permission, they would not be able to change those cameras. Now, as you can see, tile ID number 15 is taking up a full monitor with a single camera. I'm gonna go ahead and select that tile. And now, if I wanted to, I could change the split. So by moving up to the split icon, I could change this to a two by two as an example. That would still put the face camera here, but would open up three additional tiles where I could put three additional cameras. So I would go over to my camera list, search for the cameras that I want to add, and drag and drop them into those different tiles. Once I'm satisfied with my view, I can go ahead and choose to save that view, and I'll be offered a save or a save as, where I can give it a name. Before I actually do that, I want to show you here under the view section that you have a few different options. So first of all, you can create what we call a view group, and I've created a view group here called COI Showroom 1. Once you've created a view group, you can add views within that view group. So here I have a view called Showroom Visible, and underneath that I have another view called Showroom Thermal. So for an example, I could have had all visible cameras in the first view and thermal cameras in the second view. Now remember, this view is not going to be saved unless I go ahead and select to save this. And now I will update my showroom visible where I've basically just taken the face camera and put it in one fourth of this last monitor, opening up three additional tiles for other cameras. Now, once you've got different views made up, I've got my showroom visible and I've got my showroom thermal. You'll notice that there's an icon next to the view group, which looks like a little play button. This play button will allow me to auto switch between the two different views and I can set the timing from 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, or custom up to 3600 seconds. At any time, if I want to stop that, I can go ahead and click on stop and the auto switching will end. You might have also noticed I put a typo here in the name of the showroom thermal. So how do I fix that? Well, up here I've got an edit button, which will allow me to come in and make those kind of changes without having to start all over again. And I also have the ability to change the order of the different views by moving them up or down within the list as necessary. The last item that we want to talk about is a roaming window. Now I actually have two roaming windows here and here. These are windows that can actually be placed anywhere within the video wall. Just to show you how this would work, I'm going to go ahead and add another roaming window. So I select the roaming window icon, and then I basically just click and drag where I want that window to actually be. And then I can go to my camera list, choose a camera that I want to display there, drag that camera, drop it in that window, and there we go. I now have a new roaming window. So in summary, there are many different sections to the management of a smart wall within the control client. The more time you spend here, the quicker you're going to master all the different things that are available through the smart wall management section. When you're done managing the smart wall, you can go ahead and close the configuration window, which again was located under the tools section in the control client.